shout out to Steve Sullivan, who emailed me and asked me to make content about doing SEO for bilingual websites, doing SEO for websites in different languages. And you know, it's actually, it's almost a hack how easy it is. So on this episode of the Edward show, I'm going to share why SEO in other languages is so easy and then how to implement it and actually it's easier than ever to implement now, especially with Google's AI Gemini integration into Google Sheets. And I'm going to talk about all of this. And it's so easy. It's so straightforward. And once you have it set up, it's just a fast way to get a lot of extra traffic. Now, the, the real problem, before I go into it, the real problem is whatever you're selling, what you're selling, that needs to be translated. That's actually more of the, tra that's more of the, the challenge. So whatever your product is, you have to have it in the language that, that you are doing SEO in. But if you can do that, then SEO in other languages will be a good channel for you. Now, why to answer Steve's question, to answer Steve Sullivan's question, why will it be a good, cha a good channel for you? The main thing I, I talk about this all the time on the show, how you want to target, there's so many purchase intent keywords that because they're purchase intent and just there's so few people naturally who are ready to buy, these keywords have lower search volume. Because the keywords have, they're at the bottom of the funnel, because they have lower search volume, there's just naturally less competition. There's less people targeting these keywords. Generally speaking, the less people that are searching for a specific phrase or term that's a keyword on Google, the less competition there is for these keywords. That makes them easier to rank for. You can have sloppier SEO and still rank for them. Now, if you have good SEO, it's going to be so much easier. But even if you're sloppy with keywords that don't have a lot of competition, they're just very easy to rank for. And doing SEO in languages other than English, it's so much easier than English. English, because there's the most money in the English market, there's also the most competition in the English market. But you know, there's riches in niches. And there's just naturally, there are so many keywords in other languages that are not being adequately targeted by digital marketers and SEOs who are doing search engine optimization or making websites for those languages. So they're just lower competition, easier to rank for. There's less sophisticated SEOs in this market. All you have to do is take the best, the best practices that I talk about all the time on this show, do that for other languages and you will dominate. Many regions haven't really fully adopted. When I say less sophisticated SEO, many regions just straight up have not fully adopted advanced SEO practices. And I would, I would say, I wouldn't even say what I talk about on this show is super advanced. It's quite basic, but a lot. And I wrote this in my newsletter yesterday, edwardstrom.com forward slash newsletter. Most SEO gurus overcomplicate things. And what I teach is I try to actually like, I try to make you forget about all the garbage stuff that lots of gurus ha have taught that, that make search engine optimization way over complicated. For example, I saw somebody on TikTok saying you need sch schema markup is going to be the biggest thing in 2025. That tremendously overcomplicates things. You don't need schema markup, nor do you need to have great scores on Google PageSpeed Insights. I see, I talk about this all the time, I see websites that have incredible rankings on Google, ranking for so many, ranking one for so many valuable keywords with, with people who want to spend a lot of money who are searching these keywords. They rank one for them and they fail on Google PageSpeed Insights. You don't need to have crazy backlink strategies. You don't need to do crazy link building. So basically what I'm trying to say is lots of SEOs overcomplicate things. If you just do a lot of the best practices, you will, you're going to dominate in other markets because they're easy. You have underserved audiences. Like I said, there are huge content gaps that you can easily fill. There's also more trust for localized content. It really eases conversion. If someone speaks English, but they, but it's not their native language, they might prefer, there's a good chance they're going to prefer a page that's localized in their language. Oh, backlinks are cheaper. Backlinks are easier and cheaper to go after because these are smaller markets. So it's just overall, it's way easier. It's way faster. It's like a hack. Now, here's how you incorporate this into if you have an existing English website, 
Here's how you incorporate this, and it's very straightforward. First, decide on your languages. Don't start with every language. There are plugins that will allow you to do this. If you're doing this manually, choose the most valuable other languages to you. Maybe you get data from Google Analytics or Google Search Console to see where international traffic comes from. Maybe you know from talking to people from your market. Choose one or two languages to start in. I would suggest one, just make it really easy for yourself. The, you know what? I said it's easier and I, I want to give a disclaimer. The other thing that's a bit more difficult is just it's it is more time consuming to put in different versions of your SEO pages or to create new SEO pages for these. Now you can rank faster and you don't need as much work to rank, but you still need to to translate the, the content. And I'm going to talk about how to do that very easily in a, in a moment. You still need to translate the content. And you also need to do keyword research. You might, you, you will probably be going after different keywords in other languages than you would be in English. Because in English, the most high traffic keywords, they're so competitive, they might not be worth going after. They just take too much work. But in other languages, there will be super high traffic keywords that are completely underserved. And so you create a page for these keywords. And you would also, you know, you would create that page in English and you would have it translated into the other language. But that's a step that's still a new page that you are creating for that new language. And then you're deciding which of your pages you want translated as well, because maybe you have so many pages on your site, it's just not worth translating them all. But you figure start with one language, make it really easy. There are different ways that you can incorporate this into your site, site structure. So you could do yourwebsite.com forward slash then the country code. So forward slash ES for Spanish, or you could do it as a subdomain es.yourwebsite.com, or you could get a new TLD just for, just for this new top level domain. So your website dot ES, the top level domain requires a lot more maintenance, the subdomain. Honestly, it's the, the top level domain and the subdomain harder for SEO because now you have to build links to this subdomain and you have to build links to the, you have to build a lot more links because you don't have existing authority to the subdomain and the new top level domain. The best way to do it is to just use a, a subfolder, a subdirectory, yourwebsite.com forward slash ES forward slash the country code. And so your homepage would literally be in the other language, your homepage would be yourwebsite.com forward slash ES. That's it. And then your normal URL structure would just come after that. So your about would be yourwebsite.com forward slash ES forward slash about in Spanish. How do you say about in Spanish? Sobre dash nosotros, about us. Okay, that's cool. That would, that would be your about page. I would say translate all of your key pages, your about, your terms, your privacy policy, whatever, the, whatever your key pages are, not all of your blog posts, only the blog posts that are really necessary, your, pri your privacy policy, and then your existing SEO pages, translate all of those, unless some of them are super long tail. You know what? Translate those, translate those two, translate all of your SEO pages, because honestly, the content gaps are so great in other languages. It's just your pages will soak up so many rankings because the content gaps are so great because they're so there's so many less pages in other markets doing proper SEO that have that have with good websites. It's just so much easier. So translate all of your SEO pages and all of your key pages. And that's before you start doing that's before you start going after other keywords where you are finding these keywords in other languages. This is huge. You need to use href lang tags, but it's it sounds complicated. It's really easy. If you're listening, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can you can Google the syntax. And if you are watching on YouTube, I'm sharing it. But you have this very simple code that goes into the head section of each page saying, basically saying, this is where the English version is. And this is where the Spanish version is. And this is where the version in French is. And this is where the, ver the version in Dutch is. And it just specifies the version in each. And then you have a drop down in your heading navigation and in your putting your footer as well. And then you can click in the drop down for each for the language for each page. So you're on the about page, you go to the drop down, you click Spanish, and then you see it in Spanish. Before I get into the content, the other thing, build local backlinks. You don't need a lot of backlinks. It's so much easier. SEO in other languages is so much easier. You don't need a lot of backlinks. 
but building local backlinks to your homepage, that will be helpful. You can use Chrome, Chrome auto translates websites. Now, okay, so here's the thing for the text. Should you use Google Translate? Absolutely not. And I'm going to tell you why. First of all, you can use ChatGPT, but way easier. Take everything, and th this is why I said this is kind of a game changer. Take everything that you want translated, put it in its own cell into Google Sheets. And then this is a new feature in Google Sheets. And you, it's equals AI parentheses quotation, and then you give it a prompt. So translate this into Spanish. Don't give a confirmation. Just translate into Spanish. Maintain the line breaks. And that's your prompt. Something like that. That's your, I actually tried this before. That's And it worked. And that's your prompt. Then you do another quotation closing your prompt. You do a comma. You do a space. And you select your cell. And then you do, a, and you do another parentheses to end it. And that's it. And then you drag this all down for every piece of content that you want translated. So on the left, you would have all of your English content that you want translated. And then on the right, you have all of the AI translations and you, with one click, it, you translate everything at once. And because it's Gemini, because it's conversational AI, it's going to actually translate and sound pretty standard to the language. It's going to be, it's going to be a bit overly formal as AI always is, but it's so, it's, it's just so, 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 so much better than Google Translate. Because the thing is conversational AI, when it translates, it looks at the meaning behind the, behind the words. And it doesn't just translate the words, it translates the meaning behind the words. So I travel all the time. I talk about that on the show. I go to all these different countries. And instead of using Google Translate to talk to people, I very often use ChatGPT because ChatGPT will give a much more accurate translation of what I am trying to say to somebody else. And when I'm having somebody else speak to me, I'm using ChatGPT to translate what they are saying to me because ChatGPT, again, will get the meaning of what they are trying to say in their language and then translate it into English in a way that sounds native to me. And so you can, with just one click with this formula and one click, you can translate all of the text on your site and then just copy and paste it into the new pages. Now you can use automations to do this. You have, if you use an automation to do it, you have to make sure that it's not, it's not rendered on the spot. So if somebody loads a page, it doesn't get rendered on the spot because if it's getting rendered on the spot, Google is not going to be able to, to crawl it. Google just has major issues crawling JavaScript and rendering JavaScript. It's, it's really going to make things so much harder for you. So it's best that it's rendered basically before anybody goes to that. It's called server side rendering, and that's a bit more technical. But if you're not a technical person, this is still so easy. You just take all of your text, you paste it into Google Sheets, you use that formula with one click, Gemini translates all of the, everything and the meaning behind what you are writing into your target language. And then you just have to paste it in. The other thing that's kind of a pain is if you make changes to the page and you have to retranslate it and then you have to re copy and paste it, but it's not that huge a deal. That's honestly, it's not that huge a deal. And you're just going to get so much more traffic from being in all of these other markets. So that's what you have to know about doing SEO for bilingual web websites. It's way easier. It's way faster. And now with Gemini's integration into Google Sheets, translating is also so much easier. Oh my gosh. Thank you to Steve Sullivan for the question and everybody who watched and who listened. I hope you enjoyed episode 656 of my daily digital marketing podcast, 656 days in a row doing this show. That is crazy. 656 days in a row. Wow. All right, everyone. I will talk to you again tomorrow. Bye now.